What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin, you're watching No Limits On channel from Russia with Love. Today I'll compare two 4K 32 inch monitors to find out ultimate desktop display for your work. BenQ PD3200U for $700 versus AOC U32 U1. Let's go! For more than 7 years I've been using my 27 inch 5K iMac as my daily editing machine and recently I purchased 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro and editing on a smaller screen after a bigger one is a bit of a pain. It's totally doable but not as comfortable and I decided to try out a bigger monitor 32 inches. I took 4 different monitors from $400 to $1000 and used each one for a week and edited at least 5 complete videos on each one. Soon on the channel I'll make a full foam monitors comparison but today we're talking specifically about two higher priced ones. BenQ and AOC monitors. In the beginning I'll tell you about my user experience for both productivity work and video editing and overall feelings about it, benefits and drawbacks that matter to me the most and then we'll compare the specs and features in detail. The first major difference is overall feelings about the design and hardware of the monitors when you first set those up at your desk. 32 inches is quite a large screen and you definitely want to position such big monitors at least at 60 to 70 centimeters from your eyes so you don't move your head to look from corner to corner, otherwise you'll end up with a neck pain in a few hours. So think of the placement first and your desk setup before you purchase such a big screen. The BenQ monitor has a huge stand that takes a lot of space and also very thick bezels and the screen itself is kind of pushed into the frame, which causes reflections at the sides of the screen when you have something bright on the screen like colorful wallpaper or a menu bar with white text on darker background, which is very annoying. And overall aesthetics of BenQ monitor feels like bulky and outdated. AOC monitor on the other hand feels incredibly modern and sleek. It's designed by Studio FA Porsche and the metal kind of industrial stand and very slim bezels make it a great companion to your MacBook Pro and overall your minimalistic desk setup. I love this design. And speaking about MacBooks, AOC U32U1 supports USB Type-C connectivity with DisplayPort's alternative modes and 65 watt charging, which is a very nice addition. But unfortunately, when your computer goes to sleep and wakes back up, you need to press the power button on the monitor itself to connect again using Type-C. With HDMI connectivity, it works automatically. And BenQ doesn't support USB-C display connectivity at all. Now let's talk about the image quality itself. Both are 4K monitors and at 60-70 cm away from your eyes you don't see individual pixels at all. I'm pretty spoiled by a very bright mini LED MacBook Pro 16 inch display, so the brightness of 350 nits on the BenQ feels incredibly dim and very uncomfortable to use together with MacBook as a secondary display. AOC is 600 nits and it matches MacBook screen perfectly and you can easily use it without curtains being completely shut in your room. By the way, both BenQ and AOC have matte finish and the MacBook Pro 16 inch has glossy finish. I do prefer the glossy one, but there are only a few big monitors with glossy finish on the market. The color out of the box on the BenQ is really green and I had to mess around with the settings a lot to get closer to MacBook colors. But anyway, I would suggest calibrating every monitor you purchase so you'll be confident in your color grading, etc. AOC out of the box has almost perfectly matching colors to my MacBook Pro, not perfect, but very close but I would calibrate it anyway. We'll talk about the specs, color gamuts and so on a little bit later in the video. Overall, I do love the 32 inch size and highly recommend trying out such screen size for professional applications and to be honest, I first used the BenQ for a week and then switched to AOC and it felt like night and day. So for me, AOC is totally worth extra $300 because we spend dozens of hours a week in front of a monitor and the joy of using it affects your productivity as well. So long story short, I vote for AOC hands down. And now we'll dive deep into nuances, so if you are still here, please consider smashing the like and subscribe buttons and the notifications bell. Thank you, let's move on. So these are both IPS panels, but AOC is WLED type and the BenQ is IPS type LCD. The contrast ratio is 1300 to 1 on AOC 
and 1000 to 1 on BenQ, so AOC has more contrast. And the dynamic contrast is 50 million to 1 on the AOC, and the BenQ has 20 million to 1. The bit depth is great on both monitors, both are true 10 bit panels and can reproduce more than a billion colors. Both are 60 Hz monitors, and the AOC is rated at 5 milliseconds response rate, and the BenQ is at 4 milliseconds, but you won't notice it anyway. The viewing angles are both 178 degrees horizontally and vertically, and AOC has CR10 rating. The PPI is 140 on the AOC and 137 on the BenQ, but once again you cannot notice it. And now comes the interesting part, which is the color gamut. AOC is rated at 100% Adobe RGB, 98% of DCI-P3, which is really great, also 96% NTSC, its National TV Standard Committee, and 135 sRGB. Great results. But BenQ is also doing a good job at 100% Rec.709 and 100% sRGB. AOC is winning in HDR compatibility, it has Display HDR 600 and VESA certified. The BenQ doesn't have any HDR mode. Also, you can use both monitors as kind of a hub for your computer. So, let's go through the ports. AOC has HDMI, HDMI 2.0, both in and out audio, USB Type-C with Display Port Alternative Mode and Charging, Display Port 1.2, and 4 USB 3.2. Great result here. BenQ has Display Port 1.2. Mini Display Port 1.2, 2 HDMI 2.0, a card reader SDHC and SDXC MMC. You have a USB hub for downstream and two upstream, and a KVM switch so you can connect two computers and switch between those in a matter of seconds. And the headphones jack. The power brick is built into the BenQ monitor, which is both good and bad. It's good because it doesn't take an additional space, but if it's broken, you have to bring the whole very heavy monitor to the service. And the AOC has quite small power brick, which you can easily hide behind the table, and it's a little bigger than the LG's monitor 32-inch power brick, but it's okay. And if it's broken, you can separately take this part, the power brick itself, to the service, and you don't have to carry the whole monitor to a different place. And also about the kit. The AOC monitor has a DisplayPort cable, HDMI cable, and a USB Type-C cable. And the BenQ has a DisplayPort, Mini DisplayPort, and the HDMI. Both monitors have built-in speakers, but the quality is very poor. I'll let you listen and compare it to the built-in speakers of the MacBook Pro 16-inch, and specs-wise, AOC has two 2 watt speakers and BenQ has two 5 watt speakers. BenQ is louder, but the sound quality is so poor and so bad that I can give 4 out of 10 for BenQ and 5 out of 10 to AOC, but none of those are comparable to the 16 inch MacBook Pro built in speakers. So take a listen. Both monitors support Visa mounts, 100 by 100, and now let's talk about the stands. The AOC has a very stylish and cool looking stand made out of steel. It's pretty wide and you have to put it a little aside from the wall if you want to put it to the wall. And also you can rotate this monitor to a portrait mode like 90 degrees. You can rotate it left and right for 40 degrees left and 40 degrees right, 12 centimeters of height adjustment and the tilt of minus 3.5 degrees to 18.5 degrees. The BenQ stand is huge as I said before and it's very fat and you also have to put it not to the wall exactly, like a little bit away from the wall. It has auto pivot and 90 degrees rotation to portrait mode, 15 centimeters of height adjustment, 45 degrees of left and right and the tilt from minus 5 to 20 degrees. 
pretty nice results for both of those. The cable management is not the strongest side of AOC, we have three velcros in the kit and that's it, it's not the best way and not the cleanest way, and the BenQ has a special hole in the stand and you can put all of the cables through that hole. And now about the menu system and the ways of controlling the monitor. The AOC menu system is just horrible, look at this design, it's not designed by Porsche by any means, it's just horrendous. And you control it with a joystick on the back, which is okay, but sometimes you do have some misclicks, which is really irritating. So once you set this monitor up, I wouldn't suggest going into the menu. On BenQ we have two different ways of controlling it, on the body of the monitor itself with the touch um, buttons, and it's pretty irritating and annoying and doesn't work to me, I was really angry when I was trying to set up the color of this monitor. And also you have a little dock station, which is much better in my opinion, but once again it's an additional tool, an additional cable, and I don't really like using it as well, and the menu system is also pretty complex and not really user-friendly. I've already mentioned the design and I would give 9 out of 10 for AOC monitor and the BenQ is pretty outdated and fat and the big stand with fat bezels, I would give 3 out of 10 probably. And now let's talk about some additional features, the AOC has flicker free system and low blue light. And the BenQ has a lot of different features like the luminance sensor for auto brightness adjustments, the CAD and CAM mode for graphics, the KVM switch for using two different uh, keyboards and mouses and basically two different computers with one monitor, dual view system, flicker free, low blue light, picture in picture mode and eye protect sensor. And finally, once again about the price, the AOC is $1000 and the BenQ is $700, but once again, I would save up some cash and go for the AOC because it's much better in terms of picture quality, brightness and a lot of different features, so I would definitely vote for AOC once again. So what are your thoughts guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. And uh, just let me know in the comment section below which 32 inch monitor do you use and also which one would you pick if you were choosing a monitor in this price range. This was Alek Nikitin, No Limits On Channel and I see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye. Warmest hugs from Russia.